Denver Broncos wide receiver Jerry Judy enters a pivotal year with the Broncos this season. A brand new offense with Russell Wilson. What are the expectations? What are Judy's strengths and weaknesses? And how can he maximize his opportunities in this offense here in 2022? You get that and much more on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are locked on Broncos. Your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back into a brand new episode of Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast here on the Lockdown NFL Network, your team every day. Happy Monday, Broncos country, wherever you are at from the South Stands to the end zone. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, senior Broncos analyst at Mile High Sports, joined alongside by my co-host, Sarah Bettinger, site expert at Predominantly Orange. Dot com. Both of us, we cover the Denver Broncos for the Lockdown Network and Nine News and Broncos Country. Once again, mile high salute. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. Free and available everywhere you get your podcasts in audio format or here on YouTube in video format. Sarah, my friend, hey, it's great to see you here once again. Hope you had a great weekend. We're continuing on with our expectations series here for this Denver Broncos team, looking at various players. And we've looked at a multitude of guys like Corlin Sutton, Tim Patrick, Russell Wilson, Nathaniel Hackett. But now we need to take a look at Jerry Judy on today's episode of the show. So one of the things we're going to break down, we're going to look at his strengths and weaknesses as a player. But before we can look forward, we have to look back at the most recent year. How was his 2021? Well, you know, it was a it was a bit of an up and down 2021, wasn't it? I feel like it got off to a really good start in that Giants game and it felt like, man, they're they're feeding Jerry Judy. Like this is everything we had talked about and hoped for. Like remember everybody was talking about the chemistry between Teddy Bridgewater and Jerry Judy and how if if Teddy wins the job, it's better for Jerry Judy. If Drew Locke wins it, it's better for so and so. Well, Teddy won the job and sure enough, Jerry Judy getting all these targets in week 1 only to get injured in that game, which was super, super disappointing just because it felt like last year, and it really was the case, it ended up being the case that the Stars just kind of had to align in every possible way if the Broncos were going to be super competitive over the course of the year. Like they couldn't afford a long-term injury to Jerry Judy. They couldn't afford long-term injuries to other players. And unfortunately those things happened, but man, Jerry Judy got off to that hot start and then it just, it, it just stopped abruptly. And after that, he was only able to play in 10 games. And I say only because obviously we all wanted him to play 17, right? But I mean, it's actually pretty amazing based on how the injury looked, wasn't it? Remember remember that oh, injury, man. Cody? I think we were all <laughs> worried that, man, he's going to be done for the year. So for him to play in 10 games, I say only, I'm using quotation marks for those that are listening and not watching, but only 10 games last year, 38 receptions. But the most, the most like jarring stat, the most disappointing stat, Cody, I think, is the fact that Jerry Judy did not see the end zone at all in 2021. I mean, that was really on Pat Sherman, and I love how you mentioned his hot start. I, I always want to go and play the what if game. Like, what if Jerry Judy didn't get rolled up on on that ankle? I mean, I actually said we thought it was a broken like leg, broken ankle, mm -hmm. based on how it was. Luckily, he was only able to miss you know seven weeks, come back against the Washington Commanders, but. Uh, better that than the entire season. But I always wonder what if, like what would it have been like for this Broncos team in 2021 if Judy didn't get rolled up on that week one game? Six catches, 72 yards in that first half for Jerry against that Giants secondary, which actually ended up being a pretty good defense throughout the season last year for the Giants. So that that's definitely there. But, you know, even like the zero touchdowns, I don't equate that necessarily on the offensive byproduct. I think a lot of that, to be honest with you, was contingent upon – the play caller, Pat Shermer, the way that we saw him utilize was criminally negligent, in my opinion. The way that Pat Shermer utilized him on those jet sweeps without even giving him the ball and using him as a decoy, in my opinion, that should have been fireworthy right there for Shermer because, I mean, players in this offense, Sarah, were frustrated. They were frustrated with how Shermer was calling games and Shermer wasn't welcoming any input. And one of those guys that wanted some input, like to be able to say, hey, coach, I'm getting open. I'm creating so much separation and he's not getting the ball. And that was a byproduct of the offensive scheme and how they did it. I think that will completely change here in 2022 with Nathaniel Hackett there. But I think there's another question. So I know it's going to be something we highlight in the strengths and weaknesses conversation coming up here in a moment. But are drops still an issue for Jerry coming off of his rookie season? Remember he had that really, really brutal game against the chargers on the road. Probably could have won the game. If he caught a couple of those passes there 
And then last year, not necessarily as big of an issue because we saw a limited sample size. We did see a couple of drops, though, there, and I think it's equated to concentration. We'll talk about that later. But in your opinion, going into 2022, do you think it might be an issue for him? I just feel like as of last season, it was so much less pronounced, if that's even the right way to phrase that. It was so much, it's, it was it was so drastic of a difference, I think, just because he missed that amount of time that he did. And then you you look back at his rookie season where, I mean, you could legitimately argue, yes, we know that not a single plays don't necessarily determine a win or a loss. Everything over the course of a game contributes, yada, yada, yada. We've got to say all the right things. But in reality, it felt watching those games like Judy did cost the Broncos a couple of wins, notably the, the Chargers game that you mentioned and the Titans game at the beginning of the year. It felt like those two games could have gone completely the opposite way if he would have caught at least half of his passes thrown his direction. So I just didn't see that problem really showing up last year, Cody. I don't know. Maybe maybe we need to go back and look at the tape and just to make sure, you know, like be certain. But I think a lot of times you do see drops are an issue for young receivers early on in their NFL career, and they're just able able to sort of figure that out, whether that's getting adjusted to the NFL ball. Remember the whole thing about Jamar Chase last preseason? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it was obviously quick for him and everything, but for Jerry Judy, it was a tough, tough go. It was almost like a, a pitcher in baseball that has the yips and you're just like, man, like, I, I don't know if they're ever going to be able to hit the strike zone again. You just felt nervous every time the ball went his direction that man, is he going to drop this pass? So that's kind of how it felt his rookie year. I know it wasn't that dramatic, but in, in many ways it was. And so in year two, I feel like he really improved that. He really cleaned that up quite a bit. So I don't think it's as big of an issue personally. Well, we're going to take a look at some of the strengths and weaknesses that Jerry Judy has had so far in his NFL career and maybe how it translates to this Denver Broncos offense here in 2022. A massive, massive year ahead for Judy. I know the expectations from Broncos country are very, very high. We're going to get that coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's episode of the show. That's our good friends over there, BetOnline.net. And our partners at BetOnline continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. And you can find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments including this year's basketball playoffs major league baseball scores fights and even next season's nfl futures bet online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs esports and more head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action bet online where the game starts <laughs> And Broncos country, as we get into the second half action on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, real quick, just want to say mile high salute. Thank you so much, Broncos country, for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. And for your second listen after this show, make sure you go check out the Lockdown Sports Today podcast hosted by Peter Bukowski, who covers every sport in the professional world with the local experts on the biggest stories. What is the biggest story here today? Check out the Lockdown Sports podcast today for more information. Outside of that, Sarah. Continue on with our expectation series here for Jerry Judy. And obviously these things will change once we get a little bit of a look at these players up close and personal in NFL training camp. But I think right now here in the offseason for Jerry Judy, one of the things we can highlight is his strengths and weaknesses so far that we've seen on tape. And I would say for one part, I think some people will say durability being a weakness for him. I don't necessarily believe that's necessarily the case. His rookie season, he played through some injuries and, and battled through it, gutted through, it, especially some ankle stuff. Last year, obviously in 2021, the freak roll up on his ankle, that was a little bit of an issue. Wasn't his fault. I mean, that's completely beyond his control. The fact he was able to come back as much as he did, I think speaks volume. So I think a lot of people get confused about the term durability and what it means. And I think it's that recency bias. Okay, well, he missed this many games in 2021. Well, that means he has durability issues. I'm not a necessarily a big believer of that. I think Jerry has gutted some things out in his career, but I think it goes back to our conversation that we talked about when we talked about drops and catching the ball. I think what if his weaknesses so far, so far through the two years we've seen him play in the NFL, I would say concentration drops have been his real issue. Now, this is something I think he's been working on. He's got a jugs machine, uh, you know, something you can continue to work on. And it's all about getting that chemistry down pat. I think the biggest issue for him sometimes with his ability to create separation and run routes, sometimes he's looking to manipulate a defensive back's eyes by doing a lot of head movement, planting, stepping inside or outside, and then sometimes looking to get upfield before he has the ball in his hands. And that is something that's very common. It's also something that's very, very fixable. I, I see this narrative a lot about 
Jerry Judy from Broncos. Oh, he has too many drops. Like, okay, yes. We go back to 2020. That was an issue for him. 2021, not as much. The only drop that I will say I re I really recall from Jerry Judy last season was when the Broncos went on the road there against the Raiders and Drew Locke threw a really good comeback route to him and he had just dropped it on third down. That was one of the ones that I saw there and I think it's something he's going to continue to work on in his game. But for you covering the Broncos and Broncos country, feel free to chime in on Twitter at Cody Rookie NFL, at Sir Bettinger at Lockdown Broncos or comment on the YouTube video. Are you concerned about maybe this being an issue for Judy throughout his career or do you think that coming into 2022, do we feel like this could be something he solves? I definitely think it's going to be something that he solves. I really do. And I feel like going back to your point about durability, you could almost make the case that every player in the NFL struggles with durability, right? I mean, it's it's a very vast majority of guys that are dealing with dings and bruises and dealing with this injury is going to keep him out for two weeks or three weeks at a time. So we have the freak injuries that happen that cost guys extra time like Judy last year. And then you have guys that just deal with the regular, uh, the regular just kind of toiling of being in the NFL, being in the physical game that it is so but as far as the drops I, I think you're exactly right it's concentration drops I watched every game of Jerry Judy's from 20 I believe it was 2018 and 2019 at Alabama and you could see at times there was there were even some times where he was wide open in the end zone in a goal to go situation less than 10 yards and you would see him do it like a double catch you know where he would he would be just absolutely wide open in the end zone and he would double catch the ball and that brought some concerns to my mind of like, oh, well, you definitely don't want to see a wide receiver one double catching a wide open pass. But at the same time, like you're talking about a concentration drop. So what Jerry Judy, like you, you mentioned it and you said it perfectly. He's trying to get upfield and make a play because that, that's one of his biggest strengths, which we'll talk about in a bit here. But he, he's trying to get upfield and make a play, and he's he, he's playing the game at such a different speed. We've talked about that before with other guys as well. You know, he's playing at such a different speed that when you're playing that fast, a lot of times you might be you might be thinking too many things at once, and all of a sudden the ball gets there, and you're just like, all right, I, I've already I'm already in the end zone in my mind now. You know, catching the ball has all of a sudden become a little bit more complicated than it should be so i think just really becoming a veteran quote unquote you know i think that's where he really needs to make that improvement of just those concentration drops the double catches those types of things can't really happen for him anymore because of all the strengths that he has as a playmaker like we talked about before the show what do you even put in the weakness category for Jerry Judy? We, we've had to tough. talk twice about the drop passes. That's really the only thing that is is a negative in his game, unless you want to bring up, I mean, he's not Calvin Johnson or DK Metcalf out there. He's not the biggest guy, but that doesn't really matter in today's NFL. So I don't know about the weaknesses. I know he has a lot of strengths. He does, and I think one of the things that we can talk about instantly, I think anybody, when you say Jerry Judy, what is he really good at? Everyone's going to say, hey, his ability to create separation as a route runner. There was a statistic out there, and I can't remember what the actual terminology for it was, but apparently he had the most yards created by separation as a wide receiver, mm -hmm. though his production didn't match that due to inconsistent quarterback play and also the fact that he was running himself open and simply the quarterbacks couldn't get the ball to him or Pat Shermer wouldn't use him in the offense. And I think that is one thing that really stands out about Jerry. And even going back to his rookie year, we saw that as well in that week one matchup, his rookie season against the Tennessee Titans. He comes across the middle, catches it, stutter steps, goes back up. I mean, his ability to run after the catch is also very dangerous. And I think that a really good game that we saw about Jerry Judy last year that really details, I think, his full potential, what he can do to maximize the Broncos' offense. It has to be against that Dallas Cowboys team, the road game, the week that the Broncos traded Von Miller away to the L.A. Rams. Everybody counted the Broncos out in that game, and this was for Jerry Judy, a big moment for him coming off the game, obviously, against the Washington Commanders, and then for him – he did. He had a really great catch on the side. He also had a really great run after the catch. I believe it was like 20-something yards late in that game that helped seal it for this Broncos team. He's just always finding ways to get open. And now, sir, I can't help but kind of enamor at the fact that he's got a quarterback that will be able to find him consistently, unlike Teddy Bridgewater or Drew Locke last season. Which is going to be scary for the rest of the NFL because we see all the videos of him off, you know, I, I want to say off the ball, but when he's not getting the ball, he's running these routes and he's just leaving guys in the dust, which is, it's so much fun to watch. And it's so much fun to watch in the offseason when he's just 
absolutely cooking these defensive backs out there and creating that separation. And he's doing that in NFL games against the best of the best. I mean, remember the Dolphins game his rookie year against Xavier Howard, where mm. he put Howard in a blender and, and he just has all these different defensive backs wondering like, what, what am I supposed to do? Like if, if, if Russell Wilson breaks the pocket, just imagine what Jerry Judy can do in that type of a situation where he's just, he he's wide open almost all the time. So having a quarterback that can find him consistently, I mean, it, the sky's the limit, isn't it? It really feels that way just because we, we haven't seen the best of Jerry Judy except for what we saw at Alabama and then snips here and there in the NFL. The the Raiders game at the end of his rookie season also, uh, it, it comes back to memory for me as well, Cody, because obviously Cortland Sutton wasn't playing at that time and Jerry Judy had that big 90-yard, it wasn't 90, I think it was 90, 90 yards, 92 90 yards, yeah, Something after like the that. catch, beautiful. I mean, deep, just... Big route. <laughs> Oh, it was it was a thing of beauty. And that's the type of stuff that got everyone in Broncos country so excited about his potential with a quarterback, because when you have a guy that can find him consistently, I just feel like there's there's nothing this guy can't really. I mean, he's going to be like Allen Iverson in the open field, crossing guys up with his ability to just I mean, he can juke you out of your shoes. He can he can blaze by you with speed. And there's, I think, an unlocked potential for him, Cody is really getting downfield and becoming a vertical threat because we know him more for his route running, his ability to, you know, the short middle area of the field and then to take off after the catch. We haven't really seen unlocked yet his ability to win vertically, which I think is untapped potential. We'll we'll see how it all pans out here for Jerry Judy and the Denver Broncos offense here in 2022. But in what ways can Jerry Judy impact the Broncos offense minus a statistical production outlook? What other ways can he make the Broncos offense successful? We're going to dive into that coming up here in just a moment. But real quick, let me tell you, if you're a Colorado Avalanche fan, you need to be listening to the Locked On Avalanche podcast hosted by Chris Maselli and Kyle Sullivan as the Avalanche advance to the Western Conference Finals for the first time. In 20 years, they take on Edmonton. Make sure you have all the information necessary leading up to when the puck drops with the Locked On Avalanche podcast. Free to available everywhere you get your podcast and on YouTube. As we jump into the fourth quarter action on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, we're going to dive into a discussion here about how Jerry Judy, minus a statistical production outlook, everybody's always talking about, hey, okay, I project he's going to have 100 catches, 1,600 yards, 12 touchdowns. I think it's very easy to get caught up in the hoopla and stuff like that, but I think we got to go back to the rudimentary elements of the NFL, the offense, and maybe how Jerry Judy can amplify the success that the Broncos offense needs here this upcoming season. Sarah, I think we can need to start off first. We talk about his route running ability, but we also, I think in that same sentence there, need to talk about how his route running ability creates opportunities for other receivers because defenses, and I'm thinking about this through the lens of a defensive coordinator. If I have 11 personnel on the field, and I know that for me personally as a DC, there's Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, Tim Patrick. Those are the three wide receivers on the field in 11 personnel. I'm trying to figure out, okay, hey, if I'm rolling to the too high safety look, how am I going to disguise my coverage if I am going to disguise it? Or am I going to simply play cover two man under where, hey, my corners, the inside guys and the inside linebackers, they're all manned up. And then you have two safeties who are playing deep halves of the field to protect from the deep ball. How do you find those opportunities? I think when you can create more one-on-one matchups there, like for Jerry Judy, if he can create a one-on-one matchup against a smaller nickel guy, or hey, let's say he gets matched up against the linebacker sometimes, if they go out in the empty set and they move him to the inside slot next to the offensive tackle, they can do so many things. So there's Jerry creating an opportunity there, but it also creates more one-on-one opportunities for guys like Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick, Greg Dulcich, Albert Okwebunam, or it allows you to have more a dynamic in the run game as well, especially if you can get the, everybody to spread out wide inside zone, pound the rock there. And then you're really going to force the defense to make things, uh, you know, try to adjust there, which is very difficult to do, especially when you consider all the talent and the personnel Denver has. So Sarah, I mean, I think creating opportunities for the offense is a super, super important element that Jerry can provide, but what's another one that we can say, Hey, Jerry, if he can do this this upcoming season, the Broncos offense will be successful. Well, just like Jerry Judy, the Broncos have other guys that can create favorable matchups for him. Like if Cortland yeah. Sutton's having a big day, you're not going to be able to put your best corner, your best DB on Jerry Judy, which means that he's got to be the one to step up. So I think a couple areas where he can be very, very effective for this offense. First of all, 
I expect him to move the chains on about 75 to 80 percent of his his catches, if not greater than that, just because that's what we come to expect from this guy. He's a chain mover. He's a third down nightmare. That's what you need Jerry Judy to be. You need him to be the guy that on third down defensive coordinators know, okay, wherever number 10 is, that's where the ball is going to go. And we can't do anything to defend it. Sort of like Devonte Adams with the green Bay Packers for so many years. It's like, everybody knows the ball's going to 17. What are we going to do about it? <laughs> well, nothing. There's nothing you can do about it because it's hope Aaron Rodgers and Devonte Adams. Yeah. Hope and pray. Exactly. So I want, I want Jerry Judy to get to that point on third down and in the red zone that all you can really do is hope and pray. I mean, you don't have anybody that can cover him man to man. You don't have anybody that can stay with him if he gets extra time to get open. So I think that's where he needs to be most effective coming up big when his number is called, when, when the Broncos dial up a play for number 10 you got to be ready jerry judy and then i think again going back to something that i talked about before i think stretching the field vertically that has a that has a domino effect on everybody in the offense going even into the backfield well i think you mentioned a great point here because everyone thinks that okay hey the deep ball game that's reserved for guys with speed like kj handler is reserved for guys like Cortland sutton and tim patrick who have this size to them but Jerry Judy can be a downfield threat, especially if he's lined up on the outside. I think a lot will be very contingent. How often is he lined up on the outside versus the inside? I know that the Broncos, the plan is to be able to use both Tim Patrick, Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, mix those guys up from outside to inside as necessary based on personnel and package and situation. I, I think that's one thing I'm really excited about with the brainstorming philosophy of Nathaniel Hackett, Justin Outen, and maybe how they can use Russell Wilson's expertise to get all these guys involved. But I agree with you, being able to get downfield. And there were some plays too and I remember one of it was goes back to that Cowboys game there was a deep over that Jerry Judy ran in coverage found wide open that's how they can use him and a lot of people are talking about hey Tyler Lockett the role that he played in the Seattle offense okay well everyone's envisioning KJ Hamler potentially doing that Jerry Judy can easily do that as well and that will involve him getting downfield more not just catching passes at five to six yards but I'm talking about 20 to 25 the deep ends, like we saw, you mentioned the Las Vegas Raiders game a few years ago, the 92-yard touchdown. Like at that point where you go 15 to 20 yards on the deep dig route, use him across and attack the middle of the field where those linebackers have to worry about a running back coming underneath or another guy, another receiver coming underneath shallow, and then you can just attack where that safety is. Jerry Judy has the ability to do a lot of damage there. And, hey, I tell you what, I think Broncos country, I think it's easy – to get caught up in the narratives as to like looking, okay, hey, here's how he was used in 2021. A lot of people forget just how good Jerry Judy is, Sarah. And I think in 2022, he's going to remind a lot of people, hey, this is why the Broncos drafted me with their first overall pick going into the 2020 NFL draft. And I'm excited to see how it all pans out for him and this Broncos offense here in 2022. But Broncos country, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of Lockdown Broncos, free and available everywhere you get your podcasts and audio format. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. If you're a brand new listener to the show, we hope you enjoyed it. If you loved it, hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news, content, and coverage. We're also here on YouTube, so make sure you throw a like our way and also comment for the algorithm. But with that said, the Broncos are back on the practice field tomorrow and Wednesday. We're going to have media availability as well. We can't wait to see what's coming out of of Dove Valley this week for the team that you root for on Sunday. Sarah Bettinger and myself, we have you covered every single day because for the true fan, there's never an off season.